Good afternoon, friends. I can't see the energy. Good afternoon, friends. Good. Before I start something here, uh, how many of you think you are very creative? 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 Okay, ma'am, you told creative? Yeah. Uh, can you think of a color which you have uh, never seen before, which you haven't ever heard before? Can you think of any color like that? See, that's the limitation of our human brain. So to think something, we need some base. Today, human beings tried to uh, fly in an airplane because someday they saw a bird. Probably if there was no bird, we wouldn't have a desire to go and uh, like, you know, uh, fly uh, an airplane, isn't it? Uh, how many of you like sweets? I know you will not. <laughs> you love sweets? Okay. How many of you like sweets? Yeah? Uh, what kind of sweet? Uh -huh. Sorry? Gulab jamun? Who said gulab jamun? Okay. Now my question to you is, if from birth till today, you have eaten only gulab jamun in your life, apart from other food, but in sweets, it is only gulab jamun. All you have heard about sweet is gulab jamun. All you have seen, people uh, like you know, in the internet, everything is gulab jamun. Can you get a dream of rasgulla? No, right? So it's very difficult, unless and until we use our senses to perceive the world around us and get, a, get an understanding of the reality and then follows the dreams, aspirations and everything. So to, to, to dream, your basis, you have to learn, you have to expose yourself to different, different things. Only then we can come out from the situations like, uh, like you know, earlier, I don't know how many people would have uh, thought of uh, going in a cycling, uh, in, like you know, 11, how many kilometers you said? 30,000 kilometers, 30,000 kilometers, can you imagine? But, like you know, I grew up in a small village, small town where I knew of only two sports, cricket and football. You choose either cricket, it was not working, football was better, choose the better of the lot. And then finally, after you go some time, you realize that it is not your cup of tea and that aspiration is gone. But if given a chance, I would have gone back to time and if I had an opportunity to know that there were professions apart from doctor, engineer, lawyer and teacher, I would have chosen probably environmentalist as a profession. I would have taken fencing as one of the sport. I would have taken a cycle and uh, go wherever. But yeah, I don't have a regret because I have a choice. Today when I know this is available, I can always start from here and there need not to be, as Karan said, there need not to be any professional uh, degree for you to start something. Tomorrow I might come with you for a cycling session. Day after tomorrow, I might come with you, madam, to take a session on uh, like, you know, how to uh, be much fitter and I can climb some mountains in the moon, perhaps, right? So it doesn't stop us. All it stops us is our mind. And here we start a small presentation. Uh, yeah, I recently, I became the youngest in the world to climb both the seven summits and the seven volcanic summits and uh, Guinness World Record, uh, they have uh, given me that recognition officially. Uh, can we have the next slide? Um, next slide? Next slide? So yeah, uh, it's uh, seven continents and uh, the highest mountains of each continent uh, comprises, uh, it's called the seven summits and the highest volcano of each of the continents is uh, seven volcanic summits. I've gone to uh, uh, the South Pole as well to ski the last degree, uh, which is around 111 kilometers, uh, pulling a sled to reach the top of the bottom of the world. Uh, I went uh, this April 
to North Pole, but uh, there were some political problems and we had to turn back. Uh, otherwise, it would have been a second world record for India. Uh, uh, but again, there is a, a better time next year. And uh, well, all these mountains, uh, can we have the next slide? I don't know how many of you will believe this, but I was asthmatic the whole childhood. Do you know what asthma is? Any idea? Anyone who knows? Yeah, it's a breathing problem. Like, you know, you can simulate, like, uh, take a deep breath, all of you. Yeah? Now exhale it. Now immediately close your nose and mouth. Now try to breathe. Are you able to breathe? No? This is the situation what happens when you have an asthma. When you try to breathe in, but your lungs doesn't get the air, it doesn't get the oxygen, and it's a suffocating feeling. And only those people who had gone through would know how horrible is that. I was uh, diagnosed with uh, asthma when I was in class two. So after the tiffin time, I went to the class and I had a breathing problem. And uh, the teacher sent me back home. And trust me, I was the very happiest person on the day. That, yeah, I came home early so I can play. Like, you know, but little did I know that it would have been the biggest blockage in my life. It would have been the big, biggest barrier in my life. As a child, I used to play football with uh, like schoolmates. And that time, you know, football, there is a football, even if you see the goalkeepers also running behind the football. But uh, slowly I saw myself coming to the backy, coming to become a goalkeeper. And then one fine day, I saw myself out of the field. And people used to play, but I used to be around, uh, like, you know, walking around. But the adventurous spirit was never gone. Like people often used to find me on the uh, climbing some trees or jumping from one rooftop to another one or uh, like you know running on the parapets and uh, the boundary walls. Uh, that way I grew up and uh, till I was in college. Next slide. So when I was in college, I studied from Manipal's engineering college in Sikkim. And uh, you know, it's hilly area and uh, a beautiful place. But for me, it became a little uh, difficult because of the ups and downs. It used to create a lot, lot of breathing problem. Now what happened one day was when I was going out of the college campus, uh, suddenly I get an attack. And out of habit, I had an inhaler. All it takes is take the inhaler, take two puffs, and you are all sorted out. That one day, I think over the last few years, that was one single day I forgot my inhaler in the hostel room. The next 10 minutes, I, like, you know, people saw me that I'm rolling in the road, trying to breathe, panicked, like, you know, I don't have the inhaler, so I'm going to die. I thought I will die, but then I tried everything, like breathing hard, breathing fast, everything but nothing walked out. But after 10 minutes, it subsided. I sat there and reflected on my last 10 minutes and I realized that I was so dependent on this inhaler. I was uh, feeling all kinds of uh, emotions, like, you know, I was feeling dejected, I was feeling uh, sad, I was feeling pity, that why me? Like, what have I done to suffer like this? But that time, maybe I was 18 and I, my, my blood was boiling and uh, I decided that I'm going to not use this inhaler again. I'm not going to keep this in my pocket. And then I also was very allergic to a lot of food and I started uh, eating those food again and again, of course with some anti-allergics. And I transformed and I uh, conditioned my body accordingly. And uh, next slide. And this one fine day, when I was uh, um, in Bangalore, that time I was like three years experience uh, after my engineering, I was uh, like, you know, going to office. My office boss suddenly told, showed me some pictures. And those pictures were not of these Himalayas, 
not of anything else, but that picture was a small hill in Tamil Nadu. That picture was so engrossing, like and I could, I mean, in my childhood I used to read some novels and comics like Tintin and uh, uh, Phantom and everything. The adventurous side came up and I asked my team leader, can I also go and uh, do that trick? And my team leader was like three times my size and he said, if I could do, why can't you? For a moment, I was like very excited, but the very next moment, I told myself that if I go there, I'm going to die a dog's death because I was asthmatic. Then I convinced myself. Suddenly I got this realization that if I have an attack in a ground floor, I will use the inhaler as the medicine. If I am in the 10th floor, I will still use the inhaler as uh, the medicine. So I thought that mountain to be around 50 floors and I thought, yes. So if I have an inhaler, it's just like going to that 50 floor and having an asthma attack and I can always uh, take that inhaler. So that thought process gave me a lot of confidence and I brought a new inhaler and I put it in my bag and I uh, persuaded my boss to take that trick. And with 10 of us, we went in Tamil Nadu, very hot summer afternoon in Tamil Nadu. We were going to that hill, it's called Parvat Malay, and there was a Shiv Shiva temple at the top. So after a lot of uh, like, you know, uh, struggle, we finally reached to the top of that hill. And it was around 5 o'clock, and it was so filmy. I was standing there like a Lion King like movie, like when I was standing there and absorbing that uh, beautiful view. And I saw the road through which I came. It was just like a string. It was very th tiny string kind of road. And I couldn't believe that I have come this far because I never had thought that I will complete this trick. I thought, let's attempt it and we'll see later. But when I was uh, looking and couldn't believe that, and it was the joy of climbing the first hill. I suddenly realized that in this whole trick, I didn't have to use the inhaler once. And that was a kind of a liberating feeling. And that moment, I felt like more than 1,000 birds had been given freedom. And I got so confident. And I realized that I can do anything in the world if I really want to do. And I was brimming with confidence and I wanted to do all sort, sorts of, like, you know, uh, as a childhood kid, like, you know, you would imagine, like, I thought I will do uh, uh, paragliding, I will do horse riding, I will do scuba diving, I will do everything that I wanted to do. And believe me, I have done every of those. I am a certified horse rider, I am a certified paraglider. I took people to uh, snorkeling and uh, scuba diving and everything. But that comes from the confidence and to gain that confidence, you have to give it a try. You don't know whether you can do it or not do it unless you give it a try, right? So, like that, I never thought what is Mount Everest and all everything. I never thought that I will go and climb Mount Everest someday. So one day, I went to Everest Base Camp and I saw Mount Everest in front of me. And that day, a dream was born, just like, you know, only when you see, then only you aspire. Only when you know, then only you aspire. And I thought that Mount Everest is yet another trekking peak. And that just like, you know, it's just the highest mountain in the world. Maybe it will be a little difficult. On that day, had I knew the facts and figures, had I knew that so many people die climbing this mountain, had I knew that it is so costly and damn costly affair to climb Mount Everest, had I knew that it's mountaineering and not trekking, probably I wouldn't have allowed myself to dream that big. So sometimes ignorance is bliss. And uh, I promised Everest in 2010 that I'm going to come back without knowing the facts and figures, without knowing all the nitty gritties. But when I came back, I was shocked after reading the book, like one of the book was Into Thin Air by John Crocker. And I said, cost of climbing Everest is like 36 lakhs. And I was like counting that how many years should I work and not touch my salary to get that? And the number was like horrible. And I was like, my dreams were crushed. 
and I saw those pictures of the equipments. I have never seen those before, the ice axe and crampons. I'm like, what are these? And then I get to know about the disaster of 1996 and I was like, it's gone. But somehow, somewhere, I didn't want it to sleep away my dreams. Like, you know, I was trying to cling to my dream, however impossible it is. It was an impossible dream for me. But then I tried to think that what can I do in my capacity such that I can achieve this. The biggest problem was the finance. And what I did was, can you get the next slide? Next. So uh, what I did was, I tried to think that, how do I get money? First thought, can I rob a bank? No, it's unethical. The next thought was, you know, that time Kanbanaya Karapati was very popular. You know about Kanbanaya Karapati? And I thought, what if I get a call from Kanbanaya Karapati? And just like some of you are laughing, even I started laughing at my own thought that how is it possible? It's impossible. But then, maybe I'm an engineering student, so I <laughs> don't take by the face value whether it's possible or not possible. I applied some probability. And I thought, is it really 0% probability that I can? Uh, go, I, I, I might not get a chance in Kanbanaya Karapati. And uh, I realized that it is not zero. It might be very small, like 0.001% chance that I might get a call. But it's not zero. So that hope of 0.001%, I cling to it. And I thought, okay, now money is all sorted. So I, so I visualized that, yeah, I'm, get, I'm there now. So what's next? And I realized the next is I have to learn the skills. I, I have all the dreams and all the things, but I don't know how to climb. How will I climb? And that's how uh, I realized that I had to go for a course, a mountaineering course. And I went to Darjeeling, in, uh, Himalayan Mountaineering Institute in Darjeeling. Again, there were problems like how will I get one month leave from office? But then, when you really, really want to do something, you will find a way to, to do that. And then finally, like that, my journey started. But when I was almost near my dream in climbing, off, climbing Mount Everest after climbing all other five mountains, in 2015, I went to Mount Everest. The dream was so near. I was so happy that it is getting manifested. It is getting so nice. I'm like, I'm just a few days, like, you know, to go to the summit. And you know what happened? The big earthquake in Nepal struck. Just after that, a big avalanche happened in Everest Base Camp. More than 10,000 people died in Nepal in that earthquake. We were there and this is how it looks like. Can you have the first video? So this video is taken by one of my friend, Kuntal Joshir, um, like I took from his. So this is the Everest base camp. Just after the earthquake, people were not sure what is happening. Everything was shaking. And Suddenly, just like a movie, uh, I think it's too much light, but it's a big, big thing coming. Twenty-one climbers died there. The tent along with people was taken up like two floors and smashed on rock. When people went there, they saw the tent is stuck with the people there and the blood is just dropping from there. People's body were like, take a watermelon, put it up and when it falls, it just busted kind of things. So, can you do from fast little bit the sound? Can you start this one again with the sound? Have a look. The ground is shaking. What about if the ground opens up? This is the earthquake time. 
when things are happening. An avalanche Fuck. that struck. Fuck. Fuck. Along with that, it took away our dreams. It took away our dreams. Come on, my jacket. Because all the money was lost in a second. The expedition was cancelled. I couldn't accept that defeat. It didn't started. It just went off. And I was so insensitive to the whole situation. I went there, people's dead body was uh, covered with plastic and I'm still trying to find out, is there a way to go to the camp too by helicopter, then go and open the routes by ourselves and go. Somehow, after some time when I was like, you know, moving around here and there, dejected, I don't know how will I show my face to the people who had supported me the sponsors, everything. I came across one book lying there. It was just like, you know, as if take a book and throw. The book title was Dead or Alive? Question mark. I was shocked. I froze there. And I realized that the person who was reading that book, I don't know whether that person is dead or alive. And that gave me the thought process that that I am alive is the biggest gift that I can ever have. If I'm dead, game over, no. But if I have my determination strong enough, if I can hold to my dreams in that fashion, how I hold it, how I held it before, I know if not tomorrow, if not day after tomorrow, someday definitely I am going to come back. Maybe at the age of 60 I can go and come back and climb that mountain only if I'm alive. So with that thought process, I took back all the broken dreams. I collected all the broken dreams, came back and started building on it. Finally, in 2016, when we, can we have the slides, please? When we uh, went there next. So I was thinking to myself that, when is the right time? When is the right time? And I realized that we have to just jump because time, money and health to have all the three in one bucket is like you have to be very um, uh, privileged because as a kid you might have a lot of dreams like you know as a kid when we used to see those Dilwale Dulhani and all we used to think that one day I'll go to Switzerland right but that time we don't have money we have all the health we have all the time but no money now when we get into the professional life we might have uh, the money, we might have the health, but we don't get the time. And finally, when you become, say, Ratan Tata, you have all the money in the world, you have all the time in the world, but may not be the right health that you want to risk to go and climb things like Mount Everest. So then what is the right time? The right time is then, the right time is now. And uh, with that thought process, I started preparing again, again, next, and next. Next. Yeah. Previous slide, please. Previous slide. Yeah. So I just wanted to ask you, we have, uh, uh, sir, how many years do you want to live? 80? And may I ask if you're okay with, may I ask the age range you are in now? 30. So I can say that you can have um, another 40 years of active life. 40 years, man, 40 years is so long, right? But have we really quantified 40 years? How long is 40 years? So let's think, in a year, how many weekends do we have? 53 weeks? So 40 into 50? 2000. Isn't it scary that we have just 2000 weekends left to achieve all our dreams? I'm sure if you put your bucket list, the number is more than 2000. So with that, it is very important to value time, to do all those things that we wanted to do, do it now rather than procrastinate because there is no tomorrow. There is only today and there is only the, right, the current moment. 
So whatever dreams and aspirations that you guys have, just follow it. Just follow it the way you would follow or the way, like, you know, you said, Madam, um, uh, dreams are those which doesn't allow, uh, I think you said, no, the dreams are those which doesn't allow you to sleep, right? So how, how, uh, um, I mean, like, how desperate are you to follow your dreams? If you are desperate enough, just like as if it is the air that you are breathing, that without it, you cannot live, you will see the dreams are done. So there is a quick formula, actually. The formula of success is nothing but you take one cup of, or one spoon of dream, one spoon of dream, and mix one spoon of excuse. What do you get? You get a wish. And this wish is going to stay with you forever, till your deathbed. And you will also wish in your deathbed that I wish I would have gone there. I wish I have done that. I wish I have done that. It's very loyal to you. But with that same dream, one cup, one, one spoon of dream, and put, instead of one spoon of excuse, put one spoon of plan to it. That becomes a target. And everything that you do, if it is aligned to your dream, if it is aligned to your target, the dream is just a reality. So with that, I will just show one video that we have uh, taken at the top of Mount Everest. Last one. Last one. Last one. Come on, no, no, no. Everest summit, yeah. So we had gone through our ups and downs. And this right. is the highest point on earth where a human being can keep his leg, keep his foot. Because beyond this, there are no other points. In this expedition, I lost three of my close friends. Even in this current year, I lost two of my friends on this Everest. Think that you can climb Everest, sir? Do you think you can climb Everest? No. Do you think you can climb Everest? No. Stop. Stop it. Stop it. They said no. May I hear from this, ma'am? Do you know you can climb Everest? No. How do you know? How do you know that you cannot climb? Isn't it your limiting thoughts, your self-limiting belief? Who told that you cannot 100%? What does it take? Yes, of course, you have to be very excited to go there first, of course. But uh, may I know the reason why you think, why you think you cannot do? Because of the age. Fine, taken, taken? Okay, why do you think? Because of the weight? Because of? Because of the legs are fractured or? Something. Ma'am, why do you think you cannot? Sorry, you? Very professional, right? What if I tell you that a 76 year old guy from Japan has climbed Mount Everest? What's your age, you said? If that 76 year old guy thought like a 76 year old guy, trust me, he couldn't have done that. He thought that it is possible, he did it. 14 years old Purna from India, she climbed Mount Everest. If she would have thought like a 14 years old, she couldn't have climbed Mount Everest. But she believed she can climb Everest. And that's why she took that first step of going there, right? You said your leg. Our very own Arunima Sinha, she was a volleyball player, national level volleyball player. She had a spat with the goons in the train and she was thrown out from the train and she fell down. Her legs got under the train 
Her legs got amputated there. She lied unconscious there. More than 20 plus trains passed over her. At that moment, when you are in hospital after that incident, your dreams are crushed, everything is crushed, your hopes are crushed. You know what we would have done? We would have cursed everything and probably we would have gone for a suicide and everything, right? You know what she did? She told, what is the most difficult thing that I can, like, can happen without a leg? And she told, yes, climbing Everest. And she went and climbed Everest with one leg. Now would you give that excuse that you have a leg problem? My friend Sian Swarner, he lost one of his lung in cancer. And he not only climbed Everest, but he has climbed all the seven summits, he had skied the South Pole and North Pole. Now what excuses do you have after hearing these? If I could climb all these mountains with an asthmatic background, if all these people, they are not supernatural, they are not superhuman, but yes, they don't think like you. They have trained their mind to make it possible. They have, if they had thrown out one single thing from their life, they have thrown the excuses. So my invitation to all of you here is you don't need to go and climb Mount Everest tomorrow. But look deep inside yourself. There are mountains higher and higher than Everest just inside you. The ones which you cannot even look eye to eye, those are the deepest fears which are like masquerading as big mountains. Please acknowledge them. Try to climb those mountains inside. Even someone who is going for a job interview tomorrow, it's a big mountain for him. Difficult than climbing Mount Everest. Somebody who is fighting bad relationship, they have, like, trust me, the, the amount, uh, I mean, like, you know, the, the pressure that they have, if it is, uh, like, you know, represented in a mountain, it would be maybe 10 times the height of Mount Everest. So look eye to eye to your deepest and darkest fears and go and climb those unclimbed mountains and throw all your excuses out and life is beautiful was beautiful and will always be beautiful. So dream big and dreaming big alone doesn't help. So go and chase your dreams. Thank you.